today I'm going to explain the movie Shadow, released in the year 2018. Thousands of years ago, Chinese kings and nobles had to face wars, internal power struggles, as well as the constant fear of being assassinated. Hence, with their lives on the line all the time, they secretly use substitutes known as shadows. The shadows fearlessly risked their lives in service to their masters and proved their loyalty by embracing death. The movie explains the story of one such shadow. Long ago, the renowned and robust commander, Zhe Yu of the Kingdom of Pei, lost a duel against the apparently unstoppable Yang Kang, the general of the King of Yang. Because of this, the Kingdom of Pei lost one of its significant cities, Jingzhou, to the Kingdom of Yang. The movie opens up with Lu Yan, the master of the Pei Kingdom, reporting to the king that Zhe Yu, the commander, has challenged the general of the Yang Kingdom to a one-on-one -on -one duel to retake Jing City. He further mentions that Yang has accepted the challenge, and hearing this, the king gets enraged and orders the minister to bring the commander before him. In the next scene, the king enters a room where Zhe Yu's wife, Xiao Ai, and the king's sister, Jing Ping, are rolling dice in a Tai Chi board. Xiao Ai reads the signs that the battle will begin after seven days when the rain and water rises and they will achieve victory. When Zhe Yu arrives, the king immediately queries his visit to Yang. Zhe Yu replies that he wants one-on-one -on -one combat with Yang Kang to reclaim Jing City. However, the king fears that the duel will raise a war and destroy the peace of Pei. When asked if he can win, Zhe Yu replies that he's unsure. He then says that he's ready for any punishment for disobeying the king. However, the king claims that he won't behead Zhe Yu since he took care of him and his sister and secured his throne all these years. Meanwhile, the minister advises them to enjoy the gathering, so the king orders Zhe Yu and his wife Xiao Ai to play the zither for him. Surprisingly, Zhe Yu declines to perform, claiming that the kingdom is in trouble and that he's not in the mood. After Xiao Ai and Zhe Yu leave the room, the king shares his plan to minister Lu Yan about marrying his beloved sister, Qing Ping, to Yang Kang's son, Yang Ping. The main motive behind the marriage is to maintain peace between the two kingdoms and stop the war from happening. In the following scene, Xiao Ai enters a concealed room that leads to a cave. Here, it's revealed that the real commander, Zhe Yu, had sustained serious injuries in his previous combat with Yang Kang and is currently recuperating in a secret cave in his residence, whereas the commander who's been dealing with everyone is a man named Jing who's referred to as the Shadow of Zhe Yu. He's been named after Jing City. For his striking similarity to Zhe Yu, Jing was abducted and secretly taught as a Shadow by Zhe Yu's uncle 20 years ago. Jing spent all these years in the cave, where he was trained to be a Shadow until Zhe Yu's health worsened a year ago. After Zhe Yu's uncle died, Zhe Yu brutally trained Jing, and now he wants Jing to kill Yang and take over Jing City. Only Zhe Yu and his wife are aware of this arrangement. Moreover, once Jing defeats Yang and retakes Jing City, he will be allowed to go back to his mother. In order to make everything look similar, Zhe Yu cuts deep into Jing's chest with a knife as he has a wound in the same spot. After this, Zhe Yu applies medical herbs to the wound in order to speed up the healing process and make it look exactly like his. Even though Jing is hurt, he assures Zhe Yu that as a shadow, he's ready to die for him. The following day, as they're getting ready for the court hearing, where the king will punish Zhe Yu, Xiao Ai gives Jing some ointment to apply to his wound. Meanwhile, Jing gets emotional and starts explaining about how tough it was for him to remain in the dark without the presence of any people or sound. Being the good woman that she is, Xiao Ai starts consoling him, but the latter gets overexcited and grips her firmly. This surprises Xiao Ai and she pushes him away before leaving the place. At the court, despite the objections of other military officials, the king decides to punish Zhe Yu without realizing that he's a shadow. The king demotes him to a commoner for defying his orders and starting a war with Yang. However, before Zhe Yu's shadow departs, the king insists on seeing the wound caused by Yang Kang's saber so that he can treat it by himself. 
Upon inspecting, he learns that the wound is new, but Se Yu's shadow replies that the initial wound had healed, but he intentionally gave himself a fresh cut to remind himself of his shame over the defeat of Jing City. Following this, he departs, declaring that since he's now a commoner, the king shouldn't be concerned about his combat with Yang. Later on the boat, Jing applies the ointment that Xiao Ai gave him. Back at the cave, Xiao Ai informs Zhe Yu that Jing handled the king nicely. However, Zhe Yu realizes that the king is suspicious of Jing as his shadow. In the next scene, Jing is in a training session with Zhe Yu. He uses an umbrella as a weapon, but is of no match against Zhe Yu, who mimics Yang Kang's technique. This enrages Zhe Yu and he starts having doubts if Jing is ready for the battle. The next day, during a feast in the hall, the minister arrives and announces that Yang Ping has agreed to the truce, but would only accept Qing Ping as a concubine. Ping has also sent his dagger to Qing Ping as a proposal. The court considers this to be an insult, but despite Qing Ping's refusal, the king accepts it in order to put an end to the conflict. Because of this, the general Tian publicly criticizes the king's action as cowardly, and requests permission to fight Yang and his son before resigning from his position. However, Qing Ping accepts the dagger, which symbolizes that she has agreed to be Ping's concubine. In the next scene, Yang teaches his son Ping how to use a saber in battle. He tells Ping that Yangs are renowned for their force, speed, and death in three rounds of their duel. The father-son duo then talk about Jing, who they think is the real commander, Zi Yu. They talk about his bravery and how he survived even after receiving a crushing blow from Yang. After a while, Ping states that he asked Jing Ping to be his concubine in order to discourage the Pei's from attempting to conquer Jing City through war. However, when he learns that she has agreed, he is startled. Despite this, Ping believes they can conquer the Pei's because the two most powerful generals of Pei, Zi Yu and Tian, have become commoners. Ping also mentions that they have the upper hand, as he is sent a spy to the Kingdom of Pei. Elsewhere, after several failed attempts during the practice, Xiao Ai proposes that Jing should apply feminine techniques and embrace the umbrella's symbol of yin in order to defeat Yang Kang. She explains the yin and yang's philosophy, which says yang is associated with light, fire, and masculinity, whereas yin is associated with darkness, water, and femininity. Xiao Ai symbolizes the saber as yang and the umbrella as yin. With her moves, Xiao Ai demonstrates some defense techniques against Yang Kang's methods using the umbrella. This impresses Zi Yu, and he asks her to train Jing. When Xiao Ai trains Zi Yu, together they are successful in defeating Zi Yu. Then, at Zi Yu's request, Jing meets Tian as Zi Yu and instructs him to learn some winning techniques for the war with the Yangs. He also tells Tian to lead and train the hundreds of convicts who are living beyond the forest. After a while, Jing takes Tian to see Zi Yu, who explains to him about Jing's existence and purpose. Tian learns from Zi Yu that he intends to use Jing to distract Yang Kang for three rounds, while the troops attack and regain the city. After retaking the city, Zi Yu plans to become the king, with Tian serving as his commander. Tian, being a loyal general, obeys his commander, while Zi Yu asks him to receive the new umbrella training from Xiao Ai. The night before the duel, Zi Yu, Jing, and Xiao Ai drink together. After Jing and Xiao Ai return back to their residence, Jing confesses that he could have escaped when he had so many chances, but stayed there for Xiao Ai and would do anything for her. As they continue to talk, Jing mentions that he believes no one will care if he dies in the battle tomorrow. However, when Xiao Ai reveals that she cares and that his life matters to her, he gets surprised. With this, he thanks her and goes to sleep. After a while, Xiao Ai follows him to his bed and spends the night with him, while Zi Yu observes them through a covert peephole. The next day, Jing travels by water on a floating platform to Jing City for the duel. Since Yang Kang is unaware about Jing being a shadow and considers him as Zi Yu, he feels confident that Zi Yu will battle one-on-one -on -one as promised. However, Tian and the armed inmates are down below the platform. Surprisingly, Qing Ping is also among the convicts to take revenge on Ping for disgracing her. 
Tian tries to stop her, but she refuses. Following this, Tian, Ching Ping, and the convicts secretly swim under the storm gates and enter the city, while Yang Kang and other officials are preoccupied with the duel. Yang Kang is defeated in the first round of the three-round battle by Jing, but he wins the next two rounds. Impressed by Jing's determination, Yang offers to call it a draw, but Jing refuses and proposes to keep fighting. Meanwhile, Yang Ping and his soldiers are driven back by Tian and the convicts using the metal umbrella weapons, although both sides sustain significant casualties. Guarding the banner, Yang Ping engages in combat with Ching Ping, mortally injuring her. Yang Ping asks her why a lady would fight, and when he steps in to hear her, she stabs him to death with the same dagger he had sent her. With this, the Yang banner is overthrown by Tian. When Yang Kang notices this, he becomes furious and starts beating Jing severely. However, Jing counters the situation and kills Yang with a shattered piece of an umbrella blade. Back at Pei, Xiao Ai visits Tzu Yu inside the cave. Tzu Yu wonders if it was right to send the shadow to the war, and Xiao Ai responds that there's no right or wrong. Whatever has to be done is done. Then, on their request, the husband and wife play Zareth together. Elsewhere, after assassinating Yang, Jing returns to his real home where he discovers that his mother has been stabbed to death. In no time, he's attacked by a number of assassins who ambush him inside the home. Fortunately, he's saved when an envoy, claiming to be the king's representative, kills the assassins. After this, the envoy mentions that the king has summoned Jing in the palace. This shocks Jing as he wonders how the king knew of his existence. Nonetheless, he departs for pay. Meanwhile, some assassins arrive at Tzu Yu's cave to assassinate him. Though sick and weak, Tzu Yu puts all his effort and fights back. At the victory celebration feast of Pei, Jing shows up and the king commands everyone to leave the celebration except Jing, Xiao Ai, and the minister, Lu Yan. Here, the king finds out that it was Lu Yan who was the spy working for the Yangs. As a result, he finishes him off. Happy with Jing's victory, the king wishes to reward Jing by establishing a genuine relationship between him and Xiao Ai as husband and wife. According to the king, he wants only one loyal Tzu Yu, so Jing won't have to play the role of the shadow any longer. Meanwhile, a masked assassin walks into the room carrying a box, which is supposed to contain Tzu Yu's head. However, when the king opens it, he finds it empty. Just then, the assassin stabs the king from behind, and he collapses to the ground. The assassin then takes off his mask, revealing himself to be Tzu Yu. Injured and raged, Tzu Yu commands Jing to kill the king, alleging that he was the one who ordered the execution of Jing's mother. Furthermore, he asks Jing to take Xiao Ai far away with him. As Jing reaches for the king's sword, Tzu Yu tries to stab him from behind, but Jing succeeds in fatally injuring Tzu Yu. He then puts the assassin's mask back on Tzu Yu's face, while the latter lies there helplessly. After this, he eventually kills the king with Tzu Yu's sword and places it on Tzu Yu's hand, accusing him of the murder. In the next scene, Jing leaves the hall and tells the authorities assembling outside that the king has been killed by an assassin and that he killed the latter. Tian seems skeptical of the story, however, he does not object. The movie ends as Xiao Ai runs to the hallway doors in shock and peeks through an opening. That was all from the video. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.